Brothers and sisters, Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, represents the bond or the link between the three last versions of Islam. The third Islam being the true version. Christianity, a distortion, and Judaism, a distortion. Though in its roots, Judaism was Islam. As in the roots of Christianity, as Jesus taught it, it was Islam. Jesus represents the link between all three. He is known as the Messiah. And the Jews were waiting for the Messiah to come. But when he came, he didn't come as they expected him to come or as they wanted him to come. And so they rejected him and said he had not yet come. And until today, the Orthodox Jews are waiting for the coming of the Messiah. The modern Jews, liberal Jews, they have reinterpreted what Messiah means to be something other than a human being or Jesus. The Christians believe that the Messiah came, Jesus, the son of Mary. And they believe that he died for their sins and was taken up into heaven. And that he currently sits on the right hand of God. This is their belief. And to complicate their belief, they claim that he was the son of God. And to further complicate it, they claim that he was God. How he ended up sitting beside himself is difficult to imagine or explain, but that is their belief. And they believe that he will return. He will return and rule the world from Jerusalem. As the Jews believe that the Messiah was to come and rule the world from Jerusalem. And Muslims believe that Jesus was the Messiah. He came, but he was not killed. He didn't die. They thought they killed him, but Allah lifted him up. And we believe he will also return. So there is this convergence of views concerning the second coming of Christ, the Messiah. For the Jews, it's the first coming. Christians, it's the second. And for Muslims, it's also the second. 
for Muslims, we have those who denied the second coming of Jesus. Because they said Muhammad وسلم, was the last messenger. So if we accept that Jesus is coming, then he is after Muhammad. So it's a difficult thing to wrap your head around, so the easy way is to say he's not coming. Or, as Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said, it's me. The truth of the matter, of course, is that as Muslims, we believe he will return. But he is not a new messenger of God. Allah has him return and complete his life cycle and die on the earth. And the issues concerning him will end at that point. He is one of the signs of the last day. The end of this world. And before his coming, the Prophet ﷺ informed us of the coming of the Mahdi. One from his Ummah who would lead Muslims in a world war against what was referred to as Rome, they represented the West. Western civilization, its forces would clash in what Christians refer to as Armageddon. And those forces from the West would be defeated under the leadership of the Mahdi. And during his reign, the world would be filled with justice. He would establish justice across the world. However, before the conclusion of his reign, after the battle referred to as Armageddon, the Dajjal will come. Al-Masih al-Dajjal, the Antichrist. The Antichrist who is found in Christian literature, in the books of the New Testament. However, their description of him is confused. It is unintelligible. It leaves room for much speculation. However, since Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the last messenger of Allah, and he informed us that the greatest trial that humankind would face was that of the Antichrist. Masih and Dajjal. And Jesus spoke of his coming. And so did Moses and the prophets before. All the prophets informed their followers of his coming. 
But since Muhammad وسلم, was to be the last, the description which he gave of Dajjal was crystal clear. It leaves no room for somebody to come along and say, it's America. Or it's the television. Or the internet. We do have people saying that. But they don't know the deen. There are people ignorant of the texts, the authentic texts of the deen, which make it very clear as to who the Jal is. Even in the time of the Prophet وسلم, there was an individual by the name of Ibn Sayyad who was suspected to have been the Dajjal. And the Prophet وسلم, went with Omar ibn al-Khattab to visit him, to see him. And he had told him to say the Shahada and that youth, he was a small boy at the time, responded by telling the Prophet وسلم, to say he was the messenger of Allah. And over Ibn al-Khattab, of course, immediately wanted to decapitate him. Let's finish him off right then and there. But the Prophet Sallallahu stopped him. He said, if he was who you think he is, you wouldn't be able to kill him. And if he's not, then it would be bad for the deen where the Prophet ﷺ was having his companions kill children. So, the very fact that this youth was considered possibly to be the Dajjal, we know then that it is a human being. And there are narrations in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri quoted that the Dajjal would be a Jew. Of course, politically today, to say that, you can be uh, accused of, you know, anti-Semitism and all these kinds of things, but this is the fact of our religion. And because he is a Jew doesn't mean that anything and everything connected to Judaism is evil. He's not saying that. He just says, as the Prophet Sallam related, that he was a Jew. And he described him as being blind in one eye. His hair would be curly, his feet set apart. Heavy built, a human being. So any claim that he is other than a human being is false. For Christians, when a movement arose which rejected the Roman Catholic Church and broke away in an attempt to return 
to what they thought were the teachings of Jesus, true Christianity, they came to be known as the Protestants. They said the Antichrist, Masih al-Dajjal, was the Pope. And until today, there are and many among them who say that the Antichrist is the Pope. Of course, others found it easier to say it's Muslims. And that is what is being propagated in the West today amongst the fundamentalist Christians that Muslims are the Antichrist. Because we are against the idea that Jesus is God. And we are convincing people. People are leaving Christianity and accepting that Jesus is not God. So it means we are anti-Christ. Jesus Christ. So it makes sense in their thinking process. So the Dajjal who would appear at the end of or towards the end of the rule of the Mahdi would be supported by forces he'd appear from Isfahan in what is now Iran and he would gather forces behind him and do battle with the forces of the mind, defeating them consistently until they were herded into Jerusalem, where they were besieged. They will be besieged. So these are facts of what would take place. Clear. They're not confused. They're straightforward. However, we have people today who claim that the Dajjal already came or is present amongst us, etc. Now, has already started his rule, etc. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave us certain signs that would take place before the coming of the Dajjal. One, the Mahdi and the coming of the Mahdi. Who he described as having the same name as himself and having the same name his father's having the same name. So he would be Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And described him as having a broad forehead and a high nose without a bridge. He described him in this way and spoke about the fact that he would lead the Muslim forces and defeat that of the West. Western civilization. We know it hasn't take pl taken place. So any talk of the Jal being present now and acting in the world has got to be false. That has not taken place. Also, Prophet Muhammad informed us that there would be three years of famine prior to the appearance of Dajjal. In the first year, drought, no rain, would take place over one-third of the earth. We have drought now in Somalia, Ethiopia. One third of the earth, no rain. In the second year, 
two-thirds of the earth, no rain. In the third year, no rain anywhere on the face of the earth. We haven't experienced that. So we know that the time has not yet come. But we have to be mentally prepared for such a time. We should not treat the information which the Prophet ﷺ gave us lightly. Our children know all the enemies of Superman, Green Lantern, this man and that man, Spider-Man. They know all the enemies who are the bad guys. By name, what they look like, their descriptions, everything. But you ask them about Dajjal, they have no idea. We have done our children a disservice. They should know Dajjal better than they know the enemies of the superheroes. Who are fictitious. They don't exist. They are only in comic books. Cartoons. Well, they made movies of them now too. But in the minds of the children, they are very real. But at the Jal, it's unreal. We have done our children a disservice. They should know about a Dajjal. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us back on the correct track. That we don't neglect the education of our children as our education was neglected. That we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in everything that he instructed us, whether it be small or whether it be big. Because he is the example for us. He has left the way forward. The Prophet Sallallahu had said that know that the time of a Dajjal is near when the Imams no longer speak about it from the members. That's why at least once a year I try to speak about it. It is useful knowledge, otherwise Prophet Muhammad would not have told us about it. Because the trial of the at Dajjal, as he said, was the worst that human beings would face. A time when there is drought all over the earth. And here comes an individual who will command the skies to rain and it will rain. When people are suffering, no food to eat, And he will have with him a mountain of bread and a mountain of meat. You want to eat? Then believe in him. That's what he will command the people to do. The Prophet ﷺ had said that there would be after him a number of the Jalud. All of them claiming that they were messengers of Allah. We know about them. There is a Ghulam Ahmed, Musaylama in the past, and others. 
But Al Masih al Dajjal is not going to claim that he is a messenger of Allah. He is going to claim that he is Allah. And if you are starving to death and you are given the option, accept that he is the messenger of Allah and you can eat, you can survive, reject and die, what are you going to do? This is the trial. Life and death is involved. And the Prophet Sallallahu said that he would cut a man in half. Walk between the halves and tell the halves to come back together again and the man would come back living. He would tell another and others if I bring your parents back to life will you believe that I am God? And if we believe that only God can bring life back to the dead, it's conceivable that we'll say, sure, if you can bring my parents back, my dead parents back to life, then I will accept your God. And he will command two from the jinn, who were the Qareens, Possibly of that grandfather and grand, uh, your mother and your dad, dad who died. And they would appear, become visible in the form of your father and your mother, speaking as they spoke, looking as they looked, telling you, believe in him, my dear son. Believe in him, for he is God, Allah. How will we be at that time? What is, will be the state of our faith? If we are ignorant of all of these happenings at that time, we will not survive. This is why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu gave us this information. To renew our faith for that time to come. To constantly be engaged in renewing our faith. Because faith goes up and it goes down. So that we don't get caught at that time when it is down. The Jal appears and we end up as one of his followers. So the Jal will barricade the forces of the Mahdi in Jerusalem. The time for Fajr prayer will come. And Prophet Jesus will descend. Wearing two white robes and with his hands on the wings of angels as he descends. In Damascus, near a white minaret. From there he will go to Jerusalem to join the Fajr prayer. And when he comes in, the Mahdi step, had stepped forward to make Salah. He saw him or will see him and begins to step back to allow Prophet Isa to lead the prayer. But Prophet Isa will stop him and make him lead the prayer saying that it is Allah's destiny that you would lead yourselves in prayer. Your Imams would be from among yourselves. And after the prayer, he will have the gates of Jerusalem open. The forces 
of the Jal will burst in, the forces with the Mahdi will engage them in battle, Prophet Isa will be in the middle, he will spot the Dajjal, the Dajjal, the Dajjal will see him, start to run, he will chase him, catch him, and kill him with a spear, lifting the spear up afterwards, showing the blood of a Dajjal and confirming his defeat. The Dajjal will be defeated by Prophet Isa. And following that, as the forces that fought along with him, etc., are jubilant and the word spread, the defeat of the Dajjal, in that period, Prophet Isa will be informed that Allah has released another people, another evil force that has been attempting to enter into this world upon human beings for generations. It will be the people known as Al-Ma'juj and Al-Ya'juj wa Ma'juj the Gog and the Magog who Dhul Qarnayn sealed thousands of years ago the barrier which prevented them from overrunning the earth will come down by Allah's permission and they will spread over the earth and defeat all of the forces in their <clears throat> wake and Allah will inform Prophet Isa that the only safe place that he will be able to find is Mount Tur. Now there's Mount Tur in Sinai, in the Sinai, and there's also Mount Tur near Jerusalem. There are two mountains carrying the same name. He would seek refuge there with forces that remained with him. They would be besieged there. And it would seem that this was the end because the Gog and the Magog devastate all forces that come before them. Nothing can stop them as Allah had informed Prophet Isa. And this affirms for us in case people would fall back into the same mistake of giving Prophet Isa supernatural powers till they elevate him to be God again. Allah shows the world the vulnerability of Prophet Isa. He cannot defeat them. He killed the Dajjal. But he isn't God. Nor the Son of God. So it is when there is no hope left that Allah sends some insects that the Prophet Sallallahu described like the larva of the locusts that would find their way to the necks of the, the, of the Gog and the Magog and bore into their necks, into their brains and kill them. And they would just die like flies. 
and that would be their end. And Prophet Isa would rule the earth for some 40 years, completing his life, making Hajj. Prophet ﷺ described him making Hajj and also restoring Islamic rule to the world. Again, Prophet Jesus ruling the world according to the Sharia. Again, when people hear this, Muslims are obsessed with ruling the world according to Sharia. They point their fingers, they raise objections, so much so that 22 states in the U.S., out of their 52 states, 22 of them legally banned Sharia. Of course, when the representatives of these states were asked, okay, so what is this Sharia that you're banning? They said, we're banning suicide bombing, we're banning terrorism. Because in their mind, Sharia means suicide bombing, terrorism, ISIS, and whatever else. This is, this, this is Sharia. They don't realize that praying five times a day, that's Sharia. So when you ban Sharia, you're saying Muslims will not be allowed to pray five times a day. Will not be allowed to fast in Ramadan. And so on and so forth. Ignorance. Sheer ignorance. But this is the reality. The Sharia is the law of God. The law of Allah, which is good for all times, all people, in all places. That is the reality. Wherever Muslims are able to apply it, it is their duty to apply it. Not to force it upon people. As a minority in a country of non-Muslims, you we have foolish Muslims, you know, calling for Sharia in the middle of Europe and creating this scare. We can't apply it unless we are the majority and the majority agree, then we can apply it. If the majority don't agree, even we're all Muslims, but the majority don't agree to apply Sharia. To try to apply it is to unleash bloodshed in the Ummah. Because Muslims will fight you. They have to be educated. The Ummah has to come to that understanding that the way that we deserve to govern ourselves is in accordance with the Sharia. That's what La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means. This is what it means. So the story of the return of Isa is a reminder to us. That's why all of this should be taught to our children. They should know it. All of the details. They should be able to recount it. So they can recount it to their children. Because all of it addresses and and, and speaks to the need for Muslims to understand the deen. If we haven't understood it, then we will be overcome. We will fail. We will fail our children. We will fail our families. We will fail our nations. The only way for Muslims is to come back to Islam. And to come back to Islam, it requires knowledge of Islam. 
Not just emotion. Of course, we should be emotionally committed. But if all that drives us is emotion and we don't have knowledge, then we can end up like ISIS. Killing Muslims in the name of Islam. That is the problem of emotion when it's not guided by the teachings of Islam. So this is the way forward. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us back to his religion and to forgive our past failings and the failings of our relatives, our families, our nations. I ask Allah to keep us firmly on this path of Islam. To forgive our past ones, our lost ones, those who have died. Forgive them, O oh Allah. Forgive their sins. Make their graves gardens from paradise and not pits from hell. And I ask Allah to let us die, to leave this world with our last breath, saying, La ilaha illallah. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.